2020 is so fucked that I'm actually starting to agree with John Jones on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is Justin Lesko, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt and former pro MMA fighter. And I'm Mike Callahan, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt and a law enforcement officer. Welcome to that Jiu-Jitsu podcast. Um, so I guess the easiest way to start it off would be last week we touched a little bit about touched on it a little bit about, you know, this not being a politically driven podcast and us really limiting our political views and, and us wanting to focus on um, jujitsu and MMA and sports and pop culture and, and limiting the, you know, politics that we discussed. But, um, you know, in light of recent events, I think it's hard for us, even with that mindset to be silent and. Um, yeah, we don't have to be a political show to, think that racism is awful and jujitsu and MMA and all sports should be a place where that you don't have to worry about those kind of things and people should just come together and, and do those things without having to worry about hating each other. We can't pretend like it's not happening and just do the show like normal. Right. And, and, you know, when you and I talked yesterday, we were talking about, you know, even regardless of the size of, of the platform that we're on, like, how could we be, how could we use this platform as like any type of vehicle for change? Right. So. And that's, that's not really a, a short term answer. You know, we're, we're trying to do everything we can. I think like everyone is to try to learn more, you know, educate ourselves about what's happening in the issue. And our job is to be here and, talk about fights, talk about jujitsu. And we just really want to stress that racism is a terrible, terrible thing. I don't think that needs to be said. And it's a shame that we have to start a show by saying that, but we're just going to do our part to bring everybody together through sports. Uh, so officially, so, you know, Patty, my cousin, Pat, he, he let me know that we're officially Owen one on our fight picks because we both picked Right. Too. And not only are we 0 1, we like that couldn't have been. So I was working Saturday night and I'm, I'm like sitting in the van with like 20 people around me and I'm watching it and I'm like, am I missing something? <laughs> like, yeah, like the disparity between these two fighters, it, 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 it was so obvious, but right, it had to be the, it had to be the knockdown in the first round. Well, like he got his no, belt wrong, right? So no, when he gets knocked down, when Woodley gets knocked down, Right away, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm a genius. I'm never gonna let Callahan live this down. I yeah. called that he's gonna get stopped, he's gonna get knocked yep. out, and the, the finish didn't happen. But that was the whole fight. He just exactly. don't think he ever recovered. He never never got going after getting knocked down. And Gilbert Burns just looked like the best Gilbert Burns we've ever seen. But yeah, stand up was unbelievable. Like I'm like, who is this guy? You're watching him, and you're like, and, and even more surprising was that the fight didn't get finished when it went to the ground. Yeah, but so, like, I think that, I think this is more impressive because you have all those critics that if he, that, if that fight ends in that first round there, they're going to be like, Oh, it was a flash in a pan. Like, yeah, yeah. Not indicative of Woodley, but it, it was pure domination across yeah. the board. Yeah. It was a great fight. Crazy. Crazy. And yeah, I think I'm going to designate Patty as the official, how bad are we at picks statistician? And in, instead of trying to pick, who's the best and who's the winner. He's just going to tell us every week an update about who's in the last place on the picks. Patty isn't of such high moral standards that he can't be bribed. You know, Listen, Patty is a United States postal worker. He is a federal employee. They take some sort of oath where you can't tell a lie. It's like neither rain nor sleet nor lie on a podcast. Patty's well, a man of his word. For us mentioning him as much as we are on this thing, I think that we should get like those plastic safari hats that they wear. I don't, I think those are in short supply. I don't think Patty's got that kind of pull. The other two things from last weekend, Mackenzie Dern hitting the first leg lock finish in a, in a women's fight in the UFC. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, she, she finished with it. It was pretty terrible defense. Right? I mean, it right? was kind of like, like a, yeah, she, was, the the girl might, was like a willing participant in that, yeah. like a compliant partner in that. Uh, but I, I think we kind of predicted that too, right? Like yeah, we kinda... yeah. I don't, I I don't think we officially logged it as a pick. So on 
Patty's board of these guys are bad at picking fights, I don't think he chalked that one up. Because I think we said that if it didn't go to the ground, this that she would be in trouble, and it went to the ground, and she wasn't in trouble. So I'm not yeah. asking him to give me a you know a win on that one. Just consideration. Maybe, you know? maybe a halfy. Yeah. Right. Like, like so. Happy. Similar like how that happens in in the future. Like I think you know maybe okay. we get one for. Okay. Did you happen to see in the Carlisle fight how he just walked back to the corner and got punched from behind, or did you miss that while you were working? No, I so I I missed that actual fight. Um, so in one of the weirdest events I've ever seen in a UFC fight, right? So it's Carlisle versus Quarantillo, which I think is the pronunciation of that guy's name. So Carlisle's on top, right? The guy's on his back, and he's like. You know, he's trying to pass, like, the open guard, and he's worried right. about, like, up kicks, whatever. And the, the clap goes off, like, round's almost over. And he's standing there, and you can kind of see that he's like, all right, I'm not going to pass your guard. Like, he's just like, I'm not going to get any more shots in. So they're sort of, like, in the middle of the octagon. So he's like, just turns around. Like, he's going to walk back to his corner. But I guess in his head, he misjudged how much time had gone by since he heard the clap. So he's just like out for a stroll, walking back to his corner. Right. And he runs up behind him and clocks him, like, protect yourself at all times. Don't go for a walk in the park right. while there's still time on the right. clock. Like, it was so and weird. And it's not like he didn't hear the clapper. They're in an empty arena, right? Like, so, but that like, was the thing. I think he heard the clapper and he was like, okay, 10 seconds. And then, like, a couple seconds of action happened. And he was like, oh, okay, probably three seconds left. I'll go walk in but there was like seven seconds left. He almost got finished by just turning his back to the fight and walking away. It was wild. Yeah, I, the dude like did a jump up like, uh, like The Rock used to do in WWE. But it's a, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime mistake. Like he'll never, ever, ever make that mistake again. You know? I mean, I kind of hope he does because it was funny, but it was weird. It was one of the weirdest things I've ever It was seen like a Paul fight. Daly, Josh Koscheck, like walk up behind. You know what I mean? Yeah, but in this one, the fight was actually still happening. The round wasn't over yet. More big news from the this weekend was John Jones is like, so I saw a meme, I can't take credit for it, but it was like 2020 is so fucked that I'm actually starting to agree with John Jones on stuff. <laughs> Wait, did you, well, first of all, did you see him out in, in uh, I guess it was Albuquerque, like chasing yeah. down protesters? Like my man was, my man was doing work. But like, yeah, he like took. It wasn't like the peaceful protesters. No, 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 no. He's no. not. He's but, out there trying to stop people from putting graffiti on the streets, and he kind of views it as like this is his hometown, so he you know feels like it's his civic duty to go out there in the midst of a major contract dispute with Dana White. He's gonna he's gonna put the phone down. He's gonna say, Dana, listen, you know, I, I still want thirty million to fight, but I'm gonna go fight these guys on the street who are trying to spray paint downtown Albuquerque for free. Listen, so. I have had, I've had a complicated relationship with John Jones, and I say relationship despite the fact that we've never met. And never met one time. Ryan. So you, that term's used used very, very loosely. Yeah, you, you, I loosely. There you go. I love watching John fight, and I, I think he's very, very, very exciting as a fighter but I really can't get behind him in his personal life. And he's done a lot of stuff that we don't have to dive into now, but makes it hard for me to like the guy. But in the last like six days, he's like a different person. It's like a John Jones clone, but they have morals now and are like doing the right thing. Like, I'm going to, you want to know something? I'm going to go to downtown Albuquerque. I'm not going to drive. All right. Cause that's, that's accomplishment number one. Yeah, like you, didn't, for that. you were on foot. You didn't even get out of the car. Or every, time John, the car. every time John Jones arrives somewhere in the world and he didn't drive himself, he should be congratulated. Yeah. Like, so he's walking around. We don't know how he got there, but, you know, we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt given what he's done. And we're going to say that he, he didn't drive there. And then he's like, how can I, how can I you know, really affect some change here? Yeah. Oh, there, there's two guys with their face covers with spray paint cans. Here's the here's the main thing. What are going? John Jones is a very well known person. What are what's going through the mind of those two guys when John Jones is catching up with them in a dark street at night? You know, saying, "Give me your spray paint cans." You can, John Jones, you can have whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. He still can't pass my guard, but he can have what he wants. He would literally rip your legs from your body. 
He would let he would rip your legs from your body. Disagree. Hard disagree. But so basically, if you missed the story, anyone listening, John said he wanted more money to fight Francis Ngannou. Dana White said for the amount of money John is asking for, it's never going to happen. I'm paraphrasing. And then John says on Twitter that he never asked Dana for a specific amount of money. He just said that he wanted more, called Dana a liar. And then John said that he was relinquishing his title and he was no longer the champion. And then he goes out and is being an upstanding member of his community. Yeah, so, like, all of those things making me like John Jones. So, but you, here, here's like, the other thing. So he, he, had, he said, he's like, yeah, I'm making over $500,000 a fight. So and it's like, if you're John Jones, that's not enough money that the UFC is paying. I'm right. trying to be objective here. But, not my personal but, feelings. So John Jones left. John Jones left. So here it is. <clears throat> UFC. Good news. I'm totally available. <laughs> you have to pay them 500 k to put you on a <clears throat> I'm I'm totally available to fight for $500,000. If they if the UFC wants to pay $500,000 to find out once and for all if John Jones can pass my guard, I am also available. But please overlook the fact that I have zero professional or amateur mixed martial arts bouts. Thank you. Again, totally available though. For that reason alone, you can be the co-main and then me versus John, the guard passing contest can be the main event. That's that's the like it's not even an MMA fight. Like they put it on pay-per-view and it's just it's a guard passing contest. In the gi. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited for fights this weekend because my number one greatest of all time pick, Amanda Nunez, is pretty much just going to run through Felicia Spencer. Yeah. And Patty can count that as my official pick for the main event this weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's – I don't think she's the greatest of all – I'm not going to argue with you about this. I don't think she's the greatest of all time. But, yeah, she's going to steamroll this girl. So Felicia Spencer, like, obviously I know the name and I, I've seen her fight before. There's no one on her record, with the exception of Cyborg. She lost to Cyborg last year. There's no one on her record that I think even you would know if I read you the names. Like, she's she's eight and one, and she hasn't really fought anybody. I mean, she the Megan Anderson. She did beat Megan Anderson, but again, like, not a lot of people even know who Megan Anderson is. So, not like not a super high quality main event. But I'm excited because Amanda's fighting. Yeah, she's not going to, she won't be, you'll, you'll never see her, especially with the amount of cards that they're producing. Now, you're never going to see her in a co main. She's going to be the main event. And it's just whoever is on, whoever she's fighting should just, you know, thank God that they're on with her because she's, ca- she's carrying the card. Well, she's not carrying the card, but she's carrying that fight. She's going to become the new cyborg where they're just showing up for cyborg to beat somebody up. Like, yeah, I don't see. I, I don't. Much I'll be very surprised if somebody beats her, you know, yeah. especially at 35. Like 45, she's kind of, you know, but the, the, the problem that you get there is like there's even less depth at 45. Like they created there's that one at 45. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. I'm, I'm not just talking about the UFC, I'm talking about in the world. Like it, the, the woman's, you know, featherweight class, there is literally no depth. Um, you know, the depth that you have at 35, like she's already beat the. Yeah. She's beat. Maybe somebody comes up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's an up and comer that we're overlooking, but um, I just don't see it happening, especially at 35. So can Patty count this as your official pick? That's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I I would call my mother and you tell her I'm betting my, betting her house on this. I don't, I just don't want there to be any gray areas where you're like, Oh, I never actually said it. So I don't uh, tell the mailman to chalk it up. A weird sentence, but you got it. Um, the more exciting part of the card, I think, is like this mini bantamweight tournament where it's uh, Sun Sal versus Cody Garbrandt, which I'm kind of viewing as like the losers bracket in the tournament. And then you have Aljamain Sterling and Sandhagen, and that's kind of like the winners bracket almost. Like I saw people saying online, like, "Oh." You know who's most deserving out of those four if they win of getting yeah, a triple it's, shot. It's, like, it's not a Sunshow or Garbrandt. Garbrandt's coming off of three straight losses. Like three straight losses. The last two were to Dillashaw, but 
He's now, been, the last one was to Pedro Munoz. No, I'm sorry. You're, you're right. He has two of those three were to Dillashaw. And, Dillashaw. And, and we're title bouts. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but he's also been finished three straight three, three times. times. Also, he's one of the only people who, when he talks, if you just play the audio to me, I can't tell if he just woke up from getting knocked out or if he's in peak health because he's, I can't understand what thought he's trying to get across when he talks. So did you, he's going to, he'll, if he ever hears this, he's going to beat the shit out of both of us. But um, did you ever hear the interview with him? Dominic Cruz? Right. But it's, so it's not fair because like Dominic Cruz, like remember when I used to, when I told you like how, like, you know, you're too smart to be a fighter. You know, remember when I used to tell you that? I, I remember these conversations. So like Dominic Cruz is way like, and you, you can put like Cormier in there. Um, you know, Paul Felder's actually really articulate too. I, I like I mean? Paul Felder on the mic. I'm a big fan of his commentary. Um, but like Cruz is on another level, like how smart he is, how articulate he is, you know, like, um, so when they would do interviews and, and, and Cruz embarrassed Dillashaw during their interviews too. But like when, when they put Cruz and Garbrandt together, it was, it was just, it, it was cringe. It was cr- yeah. cringeworthy. To just you were embarrassed. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, Usually, like um, a good back and forth needs like two dance partners, not just one person throwing somebody else around. Yeah, the- pull, the yeah pull him around the floor. Yeah, that's what it was. And and then he just gets he like starts talking smart, and then he'd be like he would tell Dillashaw he's like. Dillshaw's like, I'm done. He's like, you can't be done, you idiot. I'm sitting right across from you. You know what I mean? And he starts talking about Garbrandt's – Cruz is talking about Garbrandt's girlfriend, and Garbrandt's trying to to storm his his interview room. Like, it's just – it was bad. It was bad. I I think if he he loses and gets knocked out again, like, I know the UFC does not like to cut former champions, but – Yeah, they're not going to cut them. But, you know, like, what – like – what happens? Like they, they gave him that Pedro Munoz thing to kind of bump him back up. And I really like, I think that if he wins that fight, they try and push him back into the title picture. You know what I mean? If I, he because he's fight. a name. He's already like, like, did you know that Sandhagen is on a seven fight win streak? I, so the UFC is pushing him really hard. They just, they put out a video the other day on their YouTube channel of him. And it, it's titled like the rise of uh, Corey Sandhagen. And he's vicious, man. He is a, you know, he's he's a killer. So. But, you know, but Aljamain Sterling is also a very good fighter. So, I like, that's a very interesting fight to me on the card. And I do think whoever wins that fight deserves the first crack at the Peter, Jan, Jose Aldo winner. Why that's uh, – how is, how, is, how is Jose Aldo, right? Like, what – how like, because they, they thought that he won the last fight against Marlon. Like, that's that it's got to be the fact that he is Jose Aldo and everyone agrees that that fight against Marlon was a robbery but but like still we don't give people you don't give people what who gets yeah. title shots coming off of losses why you don't know? you why is this fight this weekend between these two guys who we're talking about both deserve a title shot make that your interim title shot make that your interim title fight and then if you well, want you Aldo, put Peter Yan in there you got to. You got then, to. Or let him fight one of those guys. Like, exactly. it can't be those two guys. It should be no. a three-man mix. Peter Jan and then the two guys this weekend. Why is Jose Aldo even involved in this discussion? Like, it's just – it's silly. Yeah. It's silly. What, uh, what do you think about Sean O'Malley? I dig the act, right? Like – Yeah. And he was on the Contender Series, and he had that vicious knockout on the Contender Series. Um, and then he got hurt. He got he was out. For, he's been out for a while. He did well. He, he was out he, for a he, while because he yeah. out twice for yeah. Oscar. And he was on two suspension. He had yeah. two tainted supplements. And if you're only listening to the audio, I'm doing air quotes right now. Tainted supplements. It seems to be anytime someone pops for Oscar in, and it's a person that the UFC likes, it's always magically a tainted supplement. But separate conversation. But he was out for so long because of that. Dude, he's out for two years. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. He fought March 3rd, 2018, and then he fought this – he fought March 7th, 2020 on the Adesanya uh, Romero undercard against Jose Quiones. 
and he won. I mean, he's he's he can fight. Like, I'm not taking anything away from the kid. No, he he can fight, and it, I, this is this is one of those cases where it's a prospect who the kid can fight. Like you said, not taking anything away from him, the kid can fight. You know, the UFC is pushing him, and Eddie Wineland is I'm def, I'm definitely the best guy he's fought so far. But Eddie Wineland is still like the story of his career has been. Win a couple, lose a couple. Win a right. couple, he's, lose a yeah, couple. Yeah, he's like a Brad Pickett or something. You know what I mean? He's kind of like a, he's like a gatekeeper. You know, he's a name that I know. And if, yeah. if, if Sean O'Malley beats him and beats him convincingly, like that, that that's obviously a big feather in his cap. That he beat Eddie Wineland. Wineland's been he's around been. since like the WEC days. Yeah, he he was the bantamweight champ in the WEC. It was like when they fed McGregor Dennis Siver. Bro, what a fight. <laughs> You know, like what a fight. And, and the, the best is that they do a, like, they try and promote these fights and to like the casual observer, maybe they buy into the promotion a little bit, but anybody with any, you know. Yeah. I, I get the, they're making the push on Sean O'Malley. I, I think uh, I, I'm in a situation with him where I hope he wins. He's a good, like entertaining character. He seems like a an interesting fella. So I'd like to see more of them. I don't want them to push him too, too much too quick. Like I'm not looking past Eddie Wineland. I do think he beats Eddie Wineland. But he's I don't only want- 25 years old. Like imagine that. Like he's only 25 years old, and yeah. he's already served a two year suspension. Right? And, or no, I'm sorry, two separate one year suspensions. Right? So. Yeah, I don't know which is worse, a two year suspension or two one year suspension. But I, uh, I hope he wins. I hope he beats Eddie, but. I don't want them to dare until this kid where he has a, a good win against a name that we know and they rush him into the title shot and then he just gets knocked back three or four years when they could have built him up slowly. But we'll see how it plays yeah. out this weekend. I agree. In purely jujitsu news, right before we started recording this, I happened upon a Instagram post or it was a Facebook post from Tom DeBloss. And I'm going to read it to you. No inflection. I'm going to do my best to keep it. All right. Just hit me with it. Let me see. Just got a call from a mutual friend that Keenan wants to debut in MMA in 1FC versus me. Uh, I saw this. It's so stupid. I'll put it up on the screen for anyone watching the YouTube feed. But basically, if you're just listening to the audio, it says, Keenan is undoubtedly one of the best American BJJ and grapplers in history with a resume that supersedes mine. I don't agree with some past actions of his as he don't mind but I surely respect his accomplishments. If this is true and he does sign, I will gladly fight him even with my bicep torn. This fight will not hit the ground, I promise you. But there's a lot to unpack there. Let's right. just... But Keenan's already come out and like debunked that. Like Gordon, Ryan, and Tom DeBlast will not leave Keenan Cornelius alone. So let's just play the hypothetical game. Right. DeBlast kills him. They do an MMA fight. And Tom DeBlast wins via murder. Okay. We'll take that as your official prediction. <laughs> like murder. Like I uh I don't know that I see Keenan fighting MMA. No. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. But like Tom DeBlast fought in the UFC. He fought in, you know, he's a big, strong dude. Like I saw a video of him um hitting mitts the other day and he looks like he's is you know. His hands are, were they, you know, pretty good? And he tore his bicep hitting mitts, apparently. He said he tore his bicep throwing, throwing a hook. Yeah. Well, my official opinion is I don't want to see that fight. I tend to agree that Tom would do bad things to Keenan. I really like Keenan, so I would prefer that not to yeah. happen. But I think I'm about ready to be Keenan fanboy right here. Yeah, right? I'm a Keenan fanboy. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I sweep you left and right with warm guard stuff that I stole from Keenan. So uh, I am about ready for from... that shit the fuck out of this. <laughs> I'm about ready to be done with this feud between podcast. And everyone on the East Coast. Yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's it's doing nothing. It's it's just Gordon Ryan and those guys. Like you know, they're they love being controversial. He's got a big fight tomorrow night. Yes. Yeah, on Flow. Right? It's on Flow. Yeah. Him, he's fighting Kyle Boehm. Others uh, fighting as well, right? Yeah, his, his Nikki is fighting. I think Ty Rutulo, Rutolo, and Ethan 
Krendelstein is fighting uh, Cade Rotolo. Um, and I think there's somebody else fighting on the card. But that matchup between Gordon and Kyle Bohm is is going to be good because Kyle Bohm is like a savage and under EBI rules. I don't know if he's being fought under EBI rules, but um, he's yeah, I'm a big excited for it. Dude. I'm excited for it. I uh, we'll probably have more to talk about that next week. More of a we'll talk about what happens in the match and the results and everything, but we're not going to get too much into the breakdown now. Are you frozen or are you just ignoring me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us and, and talking about the fights this weekend. We're obviously excited for the card. Please don't forget to follow the podcast on Instagram at that underscore jujitsu underscore podcast. You can also follow me directly at Justin Lesko, all one word. And I am M underscore Callahan 106. And if you want to watch the full video version of the podcast, you can find us on YouTube. You just search that jujitsu podcast and we'll come right up for the full video version. This is where you say thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. See you later. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.